How's Whoa. it going? <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Good morning. We are here in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. It is 9.30 a.m. here, a little chilly, but hopefully it, get, it gets <laughs> a little warmer later today. Um, tell us where you're watching from. Say hello in the chat. We've got Noor in here, Jan Eric, Alberto. Hi, Timothy. Hello, you guys. Thanks for joining once again. Um, we are here with, uh, with Tom Parker. Um, this is day two of his um, you know, photography stream. Um, he showed us a lot of really fun stuff yesterday on Lightroom, all of his workflow kind of tends to be in Lightroom, which is really awesome. Mm -hmm. It's kind of unique in that aspect. Um, yeah, so we've got a lot of fun things planned for today as well. Hopefully we get to involve the chat a little bit more about which images he'll be editing as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I do want to uh, do a little housekeeping first. Um, we do have a full schedule. Thanks to Vudaval for another great uh, daily creative challenge. Make sure to watch the replay of that and submit your challenges because we'll review be reviewing those in about an hour and a half. And then we've got Tom until 11.30, and we've got Julian with another XD Daily Creative Challenge, and then Christine Arth for logo design at noon. So a lot of fun stuff happening today. Um, and then as usual, we do have a chat and win. Um, in about half an hour, you'll have a chance to win 100 stickers from Sticker Mule. So make sure that you are active in the chat. Ask those questions, um, anything that you want to know from Tom, because he is here and available, and he can answer yeah, all those any questions. Any questions you have. Yeah. On the Ooh. workflow. Andrew says, Tom Parker rocks. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Hi, Andreas from Germany, from Denmark, Blenda. Uh, Brooklyn's from Ohio. A lot of really Lots fun, of great fun stuff. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, Tom, Tom is from Vancouver Island in Canada. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. how, how was that trip? getting over here. I mean, you were telling us a little bit about um, how you had to either take a ferry or like, what was the other thing? Uh, I just have to uh, take a flight over to the mainland. Oh, the flight, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then, oh um, my gosh. flight from Vancouver down and wow. it's not too bad. It's pretty quick. Okay, yeah. Didn't even that's... get to finish the in-flight movies. So. Oh my gosh, yeah. See, there you go. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, we are here and we're working on a lot of fun uh, editing. So uh, Tom is an adventure photographer. I'm actually going to pull up his um, Instagram here. Make sure to go follow him, you guys. It's Tom Parker uh, without the E. <laughs> so <laughs> go ahead and give him a follow because he's got some really great stuff. Um, I'm just pulling up a couple of his works. But for anyone who is new um, or is just joining us for the first time, um, we would love to hear a little bit more about you and yeah. um, what you do for while sure. I show your work. So like, um, yeah, so from Vancouver Island, and I like shooting around the island a lot, but love to travel to different places and always experience new places and see new things. Mm -hmm. um, today, awesome. we're gonna go into Alaska. I went up for a trip in the fall, and um, yeah, we're gonna go through an image, and then we'll, I'll show you how to do this one into a slide post that will go into Instagram and you can slide across Ooh, and it'll be a connected that's super fun. It's always fun when you can kind of interact with social media that exactly, way and, yeah. and play with the features. Gets the image a little closer to the viewer too. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's like using it. the carousel, right? Like a little slide. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So instead awesome. of separate images, it'll just be one continuous image. Cool, I love that. That's awesome. And uh, uh, yeah, so we'll go over <laughs> the workflow again today and then we'll go into the cropping after. Awesome. And today we're going to work on this photo of Denali that I have and it's a bit different in the sense that I'm going to end it just a little different than the other ones mm -hmm. just because every photo that I edit yeah. I have a different approach to just depending on the photo. Yeah, we worked on some fun little stuff yesterday as well. Mm -hmm. um, at the end you kind of worked on some what some ferns and um, yeah, exactly. yeah and, and then just earlier working on more selective mm -hmm. adjusting and exactly and then even like one of your mo like more viral photos too the one with the title pools. Yeah. Um, so make sure to watch a replay of that you guys because he went over a lot of really good like to tips see how and tricks. I edited that photo. Yeah because every photo is different. I mean as I think as a as a nature photographer adventure photographer mm -hmm. you kind of I mean, every scene or trip that you take and, and photograph is very different. So yeah, exactly. There's and a different approach to each of them. Even when I go back in my role sometimes and I look at photos that I have edited, mm -hmm. I'll even think, 
mm, sometimes I could improve, yeah. like my style or my taste has changed a little bit. Yeah. So that's the great thing about Lightroom is that you can always go back and change whatever you like and start from the beginning if yeah. you want to. Yeah, absolutely. So please ask questions, you guys, about anything relating to photography, its process, workflow, anything. Um, Alexander has a question. Uh, how did you end up with a gig that has you traveling to all these cool places, dude? <laughs> So I started out in university and um, I was going to VIU, Vancouver Island University for mm -hmm. my business degree. And um, Which is but, awesome that you yeah. like were doing business. Yeah, so I got my know. BBA at yeah. the end there. And then um, by the end of graduation, um, oh, sorry, but two years in, I started posting photos to Instagram mm -hmm. and then work just started to come in naturally through my email address and yeah. people just were asking for different work along the way. Yeah. And by the end of graduation, I was getting enough work where I thought I could turn into a career and yeah, enjoy what incredible. I do for work. And you kind of started out doing a lot of like iPhone stuff too, right? Like iPhone photography and slowly mm -hmm. kind of transferred over to getting a DSLR. For sure. Very cool. Awesome. Oh, uh -huh. Timothy says, love the reflections. <laughs> Uh, Racine says, perfect angle of the shot. Yeah, lovely photo. Thank you. And you were kind of talking about this a little bit earlier. You yeah, kind of, so before we yeah. jumped onto the live here. Um, so this photo, I actually spent three days in the back country camping, just waiting out for the right, yeah. perfect conditions of lighting. And um, that's what I find makes a big difference in your photos mm -hmm. is that you have to find the right lighting conditions, mm -hmm. go at the right times, put in that extra work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's all, like, as you were mentioning, it's all part of the nature of it, of being an adventure photographer, you know, this just waiting here, patience and yeah. and the lighting has got to be, like, just spot on. <laughs> It'd be kind of cool to actually show the, from the beginning kind of sure, what you were yeah. showing me earlier. So, earlier on, I've been waiting here for hours, just sort of taking photos, seeing how the light progressed over time. Yeah. And as you can see, it's That's beautiful. I've been changing exposure a little bit just to adjust for the different light levels mm -hmm, going mm -hmm. on. And then earlier on, you can see like this is more midday yeah, before the sun would come before in. Before the sunset, yeah, absolutely. I actually brought a kayak into the back country oh there gosh. with us. And, uh, <laughs> That's incredible. And I think that's something really cool about your style too, it's the, which makes it feel, it transforms um, kind of your work from landscape and nature to adventure when exactly. you add a, a human element into your so, photograph. Although so although it was a whole lot of extra work to bring <laughs> right. a folding kayak <laughs> right, out exactly. there, it would, uh, I put in the effort for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Timothy's asking, Tom, what is your business strategy? Um, Truly, my business strategy is to do what I love, essentially. Yeah. Um, that's how I started my business, is that I just shot what I loved to shoot, and people recognized that yeah. and started to approach me for different work. Mm -hmm. I know, you had the chance to um, do that project with Vancouver, right? That Vancouver I Island? Uh, sorry, which Yeah, it was like that? a project where they asked you to kind of showcase like your home, your home essentially, right? Um, I'm not sure about that one. Yeah, you, I, I remember. <laughs> you were talking about it yesterday, but I forget what exactly uh, it was. That might have been a more personal project that I'm working oh, on now. Okay. So I'm doing a lot more filming now, and so I'm collecting right, film yeah. clips from around the island and putting Got it. Got it. Okay, okay, cool. Putting film together That's about awesome. the islands because I live there and yeah, enjoy yeah, the home. area. <laughs> That's very cool. Um, Jan Eric says this pho photograph looks cold and inviting sort of cold. <laughs> yeah, so the lighting in this one was much more harsh, so it gives that colder look to it. Mm -hmm. And then as the time goes on, the yeah. sun starts to drop and really That's warms beautiful. it up. Yeah. And then I just came across looking for different um, textures in the mm -hmm. foreground, and so I came across these bushes that sort of frame the nice, frames it, yeah. frame the mountain in nicely, and the reflection at the bottom. That looks beautiful. And then I just played around with the different heights that I shot it as, as you can see, where the bushes are a little further away, and then they come in just a little closer here, mm -hmm. and just to bring the That's photo stunning. in a little bit more. Um, David has a question. Um, says, "What do you get? Uh, what do you do to get out of your comfort zone as a photographer? And what experiments have you done to improve on your skill?" This right now is out of my comfort zone, actually. So this is the first time that I've shown my editing process and um, actually shown it to the world as well. Yeah, that's um, really brave. <laughs> but another thing you can do to get out of your comfort zone as a photographer is sort of travel by yourself or travel yeah. with others, but just to new places and places that you might not even expect to go, like just yeah. random trips, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
how do you like, you know, how often are you shooting and how often are you planning these trips? Um, I pretty much spend as much free time as I have on them. Mm -hmm. um, other than work, it's just sort of thinking about where the next trip yeah, will be yeah. and um, what I'd like to shoot. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. <laughs> Claude says, looks like a Bob Ross painting. <laughs> Thank you. That's, a, <laughs> that's one of the, the best highest compliment. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's awesome. Cool. Well, yeah, I mean, this is a really exciting opportunity for everyone to kind of take a peek into your workflow and your yeah. process, especially because this is your first time kind of sharing it with everybody. So um, exactly. learned a lot yesterday. So definitely make sure to watch the replay. Um, so I really loved how you do like selective editing and yeah, all that so and on different parts of the I always image. find you can sort of just, as long as you like what you're adding on through your brushes, mm -hmm. you can add as many points as you like, as long as it doesn't get too confusing to you. Yeah, and, um, yeah for sure. Yeah, it just finds that it like you're like painting your photo almost and yeah. uh, bringing out what you saw. In the I mean, moment. really, it's like dodging and burning, kind of like going back to old school like mm -hmm. film photography. You exactly. know, in the dark room, you're like doing a little lightning and you know, for sure, literally dodging and burning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Timothy's asking, what is your equipment looking like? My equipment is a Canon 5D Mark IV, and yeah. I use the 16 to 35, the 24 to 70, and the 100 to 400. Mm -hmm. And those wow. are the main uh, lenses that I use. Yeah. But I also have a Mavic Pro 2 that I use for drone mm -hmm. and just to capture footage from aerial and different yeah. perspectives. Yeah. And we were kind of talking this, about this like before the stream, but um, it'd be good to kind of just get an idea of like tips for, um, you know, I think as, as a, you know, outdoors photographer, the lighting is changing all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so how, like, how would that affect, like, the settings that you're shooting at and, like, okay. the way that you approach each lighting situation? So for or? this one here, since the light got much lower and it's mm -hmm. just sort of casting in across the top of the mountains and not lighting up the landscape at all, I like to shoot a crisper, clean image. So I like to take the ISO right down to 100 or even 50 sometimes. Mm -hmm. But... Um, and then you want to just adjust your shutter speed to the right speed to get the exposure right. Mm -hmm. And um, I always use a tripod when your shutter yeah. speed gets to a certain uh, thing, less than maybe one two hundredth of a second. Yeah, yeah, especially you don't want to introduce any handshake. If, especially or... <laughs> if you want to like go in and look at like a leaf and it's still crisp. You know? Yeah, definitely. Very cool. And well, then I find exciting. the low ISO just gives you like in the shadows here, mm -hmm. there's no, not as much noise as there would be if you shot this at 1600 or Right, so. right, definitely. And that's kind of part of your style is something that you really personally like. Yeah, kind I of personally like to keep it clean, clean with very crisp, little grain. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, Timothy's asking, what about aperture and your take on f-stop? Um, he says, I usually have mine at 22 for the outdoors. Okay, so I would say 22 is a bit high just because each lens sort of has a sweet spot in it. Mm -hmm. And I think most lenses sort of sit in the sweet spot of maybe 7.1 to f11 or f14. Yeah. So I would sort of play with that kind of f-stop area instead of going to f22 because you're really shutting down to a pinhole there. Mm -hmm. And Got it's... It. Um, yeah, you'll get a longer exposure out of it too. If that's what you're going for, yeah. that can yeah. help with that for sure. For sure. Awesome. Ooh, Hamad is in here again. Thanks for joining us again. <laughs> He's asking, do you sell photos online? If yes, where? And, you know, is that... I do sell photos sense? online, but the most of my money comes from working for big companies, like doing commercial photography mm -hmm. along the outdoor adventure stuff. Did you ever think that you would be working with those kinds of clients no, actually, <laughs> when you like, first started? <laughs> yeah, you sort of got the emails that yeah. come in like, oh, wow, this is sort of... Um, what are some of the typical clients that tend to reach out to you? Um, last year I did like Toyota, the year before, BC Ferries, uh, last year Very Audi, cool. and then um, we did BC Ferries mm -hmm. up to Desolation Sound to see the bears and um, That's so the cool. Holiday Inn. Wow. And That's really awesome what like photography is, you know. Like, comfort in. Oh, forget yeah. the name of it. <laughs> what kind of photography is like, you know, brought and, you know, as far as experiences go and been able to travel and stuff. Um, it's just Very really cool. opened me up to you yeah, know, seeing the, the world, world, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Oh, hello, Michelle. Hello, Akima. Welcome, you guys. Thanks for joining us. We're here with Tom Parker. He's an outdoor um, adventure photographer. Um, he is sharing his workflow and process in Lightroom, which he keeps in Lightroom mostly. So mm -hmm. um, hopefully we'll get to see some more fun tips and tricks today. For sure. 
So cool. we'll start Let's get started. editing here. So for this one here, I'm going to start with the highlights and shadows, just because the shadows are so dark as well. I'd like to bring them up a bit, and you mm -hmm. get a little more detail. Pretty. And then you know, bring the shadows down a bit too. It's crazy because it's already such a beautiful image, and mm -hmm. then now you're just doing little tweaks to like. Yeah, you you're know. sort of just bringing out. Yeah. The beautiful. Feeling a bit more here. <laughs> so. I just want. <laughs> That little bit of detail in the center here, but not too much that it just draws your eye to it instead of the mountain. Mm -hmm. We can come back on it just a little bit. Yeah. Um, Timothy, Timothy is asking all the questions. I <laughs> love it. <laughs> um, how did you pitch yourself to these companies to get your work? I actually don't usually pitch myself to companies. I, they kind of come to you. Yeah, they always come to me and ask. Um, I have pitched once for a company for actually the kayak that came in here, but mm -hmm. it was more just of a trade early on yeah. in my career. And I found that it's not, you don't really have as much negotiating power if you're pitching yourself to companies as mm -hmm. if they are coming to you. Right, right. So if your work sort of speaks for itself, mm -hmm. it, other people will sort of come to you. They'll be and, drawn to your work and will want to work yeah. with you and reach out to you. There is sure. the way of pitching to companies though too, but you do not face a lot of like more rejection right, and people right. just maybe not interested at the time, but yeah. you're also planting the seed for later on. You are, exactly. We definitely... So it's not a bad thing to do. No, for sure. I just found that a lot of work has come to me over time yeah, and I awesome. haven't had to pitch to them. Yeah, that's incredible. Cool. Um, Haman's asking, do you have any dream camera? <laughs> um, I wouldn't say I have any dream camera. I'm happy with the camera yeah. I have right now. It shoots it's and does incredible. everything what I need yeah. to do. Um, yeah, that's pretty much why I got it, just because I knew it could be a workhorse for what I needed to mm -hmm. accomplish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there are like those sort of fantasy cameras where you get like the medium format Hasselblad right. and stuff yeah, like that. Of course. But I don't think I would enjoy <laughs> shooting with them as much because it's um, it's much heavier equipment yes. to bring around yes. with you. Have you ever thought about um, kind of? I know a lot of people have been recently doing the switch to like Sony and those like mirrorless mm -hmm. cameras. Have you ever um, thought about that? Right now, I still prefer the DSLR mm -hmm. over the mirrorless just because of like different low light situations yeah, and stuff like more that. More capabilities, maybe. Yeah, but Our Sony's options. come such a long ways with low light capabilities that mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if they're on par pretty soon. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Okay, and then we'll just add a little bit of contrast to give it a little bit more detail here. Awesome. And then you can also play around with the tint here. So instead of having it all blue in the sky, you can bring some purples to sort of fade it into that pink there. Mm -hmm. And it sort of makes it a little more cohesive in the photo. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Michelle says, I love my old Hasselblad. <laughs> <laughs> I have... Uh, heard a lot of people enjoying their house. Yeah, lines. yeah, so cool. And then I like to just work down the slider here and just sort of play with the whites and blacks. Oh. Just sort of <laughs> seeing how they go. Alexander says, best of luck, dudes. <laughs> oh, he's got to run. Thanks for jumping in for a second. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely watch the stream later. <laughs> cool. I'm going to see what the blacks are like here. I'll bring them up just a little bit too. That's awesome. And we were talking yesterday a little about about the histogram too, and like making sure that your blacks and your whites kind of mm -hmm. don't um, get clipped. So you can look at it here where the blacks are a little bit clipped, but it's mostly just I believe it because of these uh, mm -hmm. dark mm -hmm. bushes in here. And yeah. I want to keep those silhouetted because it yes, gives that feel of pushing into yeah. the mountain a bit more. Yes, yes, I agree. I didn't even know actually at first that you can go up to the histogram and actually move yeah, them from there too. You can until slide it one time I did it accidentally. <laughs> just move it here yeah. and we can make it a little brighter or darker by sliding it back and forth. Yeah, for sure. And then cool. we'll go down. I'm just working my way down the panel most mm -hmm. of the time. Nice. Um, Jane Eric's asking, do you calibrate your lens with the camera body you're using? I've heard lenses need to have their focus micro adjusted to each camera. Um, I would just test your lens uh, as is. So take a photo, zoom in to a point to see if it's really sharp. If you feel that it's off, you can try and micro adjust it, but I've never actually micro adjusted my lenses mm -hmm. because I've felt that they were sharp 
Yeah, they're already, yeah. And then you're also, I mean, when you're shooting outdoors, you probably have like a very sm a smaller aperture too. So you're getting more detail. Yeah, for sure. most of the time I don't shoot like at 2.8 yeah, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Although bringing that up, shooting at a low aperture does provide a cool perspective sometimes in yes. the outdoors or indoors yes. where you can just create that bokeh and focus yes. on the subject. Yeah, yeah, I know in some of your shots, like especially when you've done like even those like water droplets that you used to do yeah. and stuff like. And really then you can also create that compression by using like a long lens. So the 100 to 400 at 400 mils, even at an f-stop mm -hmm. of f9 or f7.1 mm -hmm. will blow out the background oh, completely still too. Cool. So fun. So you can get that different feel of your image yeah. by shooting it really far back compared to close. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Timothy's asking, um, so these companies found you by social media? Yes, mostly through Instagram and nice. uh, then through my website. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then he says, have you always shot with Nikon, which I think you actually shoot with Canon, right? Yes. So I shot Canon. with a Nikon right after my iPhone with a D7000, then I switched to Canon just because I felt that it worked with my workflow better and I yeah. didn't have to adjust as much um, colors and processing mm -hmm. after. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and then one more question, because Timothy has all the questions. Great. Yeah, no problem. The more <laughs> questions, you, the better. I know. <laughs> when you edit, um, what do you focus on the most? That's a good question. I like to make sure that the subject that I'm shooting has um, has the right like draw to it in the image. Mm -hmm. So when I'm editing, I make sure that your eye doesn't get drawn to too many places or Got at it. least leads your eye leads into your the eye. center. Yeah, for sure. So you got these, image, uh, these bushes sort of pushing up into the mountain here, mm -hmm. which leads you, you got your sort of sidelines that would bring mm -hmm. you into the center. Yes, yes, very cool. So then one thing that I would also recommend at the very beginning is sort of make sure that you're happy with your straightening. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, uh, actually for this one, I'm, gonna go back. I'm just gonna, to make sure this image is straight, I'll find mm -hmm. like a point on the mountain that's easy to replicate from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. So I just drag it from one to the other. Oh yeah, especially with the reflection, then, it's a little bit easier to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So then that puts the mountain in a vertical, mm -hmm. perfectly centered sort of thing. Very nice. And, and yeah. that's what's nice about Lightroom too, is everything is uh, like, you know, and destructive. So you can always go back for whatever reason, if, you know, mm -hmm. you can always do different crops exactly. later on, which is awesome. Beautiful. And then just to set up for the slide post later, we'll crop this by 16 by 10. And this will allow us to export this out as 16 by 10, but mm -hmm. then crop it uh, two four by fives out of it after to create mm -hmm. the slide post. Nice. And then we just Very wanna fun. find where, I like this little bit of cloud detail here, so I don't wanna mm -hmm. clip it, and we'll clip a little bit of the bottom bushes here. <laughs> oh, Jan Eric says, this stream is getting me motivated to upload my own images to Behance. You absolutely should, Jan Eric. For sure. Yeah, so fun. I know, this makes me really wanna like go out and shoot like nature now. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not even a nature photographer, but it's just the colors and the richness and just, yeah. I don't know, Very, it's very calming. And we haven't even had to add any vibrance or sex. Yeah, I know, you can it's just beautiful. a little to make it, you know, <laughs> pop for the client. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, Michelle's much. asking if you've ever tried a um, tilt shift lens. I haven't actually. Um, I've I've seen another photographer using them before, and I'm mm -hmm. really interested in them. But I just never wanted to invest what, in one. What yet. is a tilt shift lens? Um, so a tilt shift lens will sort of actually tilt the lens a bit, but it'll distort the top and bottom, okay. and it create like a miniature effect in the oh, center of the image. Okay, so it just kind of kind of blurs out the. Yeah, but it almost yeah. makes the scene look like it's a like miniature, miniature display. Oh, like interesting. That. Yeah. That's so cool. Very fun. But I'm sure there's other reasons or other purposes to use a tilt shift lens mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. Oh, Hamad is asking, do you ever add like fake clouds in your picture? No, I, um, if anything, I just remove some stuff that would be distracting from my images, but mm -hmm. I never add anything that would be like a mountain or a cloud or yeah, trees. Yeah, anything, anything that's like not that. what the original image contained. Yeah, yeah exactly. for sure. Especially because you're keeping all your workflow and, you know, in Lightroom, so I feel like yeah. you probably wouldn't be able to. It's much harder to yeah. <laughs> try and add that stuff in without exactly. Photoshop. Exactly, yeah, for sure. 
just about five minutes, you guys, until chat and win. Keep uh, coming up with those questions. Um, really cool. A lot of people are very interested. And we'll just go down. D. Hayes sort of brings it in a bit more and darkens it and just sort of focuses you on those mountain mm -hmm. peaks a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, very fun. Then we can play around with the tone curve a bit. So down here is going to be your dark side it plays around uh -huh. with. So you can see what it's doing to your darkest areas here. And I like that just a little bit more detail in the trees here yeah. now than there was than before. Than there was before. But it's still uh, dark enough not to draw you too much. Yeah, definitely. Michelle says, it's often used for architecture photography to straighten the perspective. Okay, oh, so like tighter angles, yeah. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, I haven't done too much architecture, so that's cool to hear. Yeah, definitely. And then just by boosting these whites up, you get the mm -hmm. pink on the mountain just a little bit brighter here, too. Mm -hmm. Just touch. That's looking real good, though. But we can also just sort of go into the luminance of the purples on the pinks. Mm. <laughs> just play around. Tim's like, I hope I'll win those stickers. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, that's cheating. You can't win the stickers. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta let some of the other guests win sometime. <laughs> Michelle says, I like experimenting with photography, so it would be cool to use a tilt shift lens for other kinds of photography, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's the great thing about photography is that you can use your equipment for so many different ways. Yes, like it's just yeah. up to your own personal opinion and what you think yeah. is a good thing to use yeah, it for. Yeah, definitely. And you can actually use it in ways that other people have never thought of no. before and get yeah. your own creative photos. Yeah, exactly. So when we're going into the sharpening section mm -hmm. here and the details, I'd like to zoom into a certain area and then sort of just slide the bar and see what it does to the grain in the sky here. So the grain was a little bit high there for my liking, so I put the sharpness down a mm -hmm. little bit. But then we can also take a little bit of that noise out by increasing the luminance and noise yeah, reduction. Yeah, noise reduction, yeah, for sure. Helps make it a little bit more smooth. And then you can bump the sharpening back mm -hmm. and then it seems smooth but sharp at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Very fun. And then, I don't think we'll do this, but we can see what happens with it. Just makes it a little bit bright and punches the mountain mm -hmm, in a bit more, mm -hmm. but I sort of like this look to it more. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And we won't do any vignetting on it, and I think that's pretty much good to export here. So wow, I like that's awesome. to just export this one out. Uh, I'll make a proper file here. Nice. Just a desktop. <laughs> um, Timothy has another question. What about your intake about moving subjects? Um, so moving subjects, you can either choose to freeze them or create a little motion blur mm -hmm. with them. It's um, definitely up to the viewer, the editor's choice there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then go to the desktop here. Cool. Shoot. <laughs> Thanks for all your questions, you guys. It's yeah, if you have really any more fun. questions, please feel free to ask. We love them. <laughs> Why can't I get out of this one? I'm not used to this full screen. <laughs> I think if you hit escape, maybe? No, it doesn't seem to work for some reason. Oh. <laughs> maybe go all the way down and then to like your bar. See? Oh, maybe no bar? Um, how'd you slide over to the side thing there? When you set it up, <laughs> you said it was just like a slide, but it's not. I'm trying to go to my desktop, but I can't get out of the full screen. Oh, oh there you go. Yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. Perfect. Just Sorry about that fingers, hiccup, guys. guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to working on full screen there. <laughs> so then with that image, I'll actually import it back into Lightroom. Um, Maybe if you just drag it, yeah. I'm just gonna. Oh yeah, you can also just go through yep. the library Perfect. here. 
Awesome. Oh, all right, you guys. We are. Wow, that was so fast. Stick we are ready for chat and win. Um, tell us what your favorite thing to shoot, um, and we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Welcome back, you guys. We are gonna wait to hear who the winner of our stickers is from Sticker Mule. Um, tell us what your favorite thing to shoot is. And yeah, let us know in the chat. Ooh, hi, Charlie, is a first time user. That's awesome, you guys. Thanks for joining. <laughs> the moon is pretty cool. I agree with you, Tim. Uh, Jordan says people. Oh, Lindsay just came in. Hi hello, Lindsay. Sean says rain. Uh, Jordan says cosplays. Very fun. Just having trouble. Love with it this. all. <laughs> Aw, Lindsay says, I love some macro shots of flowers and plants. That's always really nice. Yeah, I like the macro perspective. It gives yes. you a whole new view on the world. Yes. Michelle says, hmm, nature for sure. David says, anything that crosses my lens. <laughs> yeah. Very fun. Clouds, cityscapes, rain, animals. We've got a lot of fun people, like, you know, that are in your realm of mm -hmm. nature and outdoors. Congratulations, Hamad. You are the winner of the Sticker Mule stickers. So make sure to go over to Behance. You'll receive a message um, from Adobe Live and you'll be able to redeem those. And if you didn't win, that's okay. We do have a really awesome deal for uh, 10 stickers for a dollar. So head over to stickermeal.com slash Adobe Live 20 and you can get that deal. So thank you guys for, for our plan. <laughs> oh, some people said waterfalls. <laughs> Jan Eric says, I love shooting everything except for people. <laughs> <laughs> well, that could be a good way of getting out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. and expanding your photography. Exactly. So we're just gonna import this photo back into Lightroom after okay. exporting it cool. at 16 by 10. Okay. And uh, keep asking questions if you have any questions. Yeah, for sure. Here. And just wanna remind you guys too, in about an hour, we will be doing, um, heading over to Discord to review some of those challenges. Um, thank you to Rudeval for giving us another fun space theme challenge. Um, if you didn't get to watch the replay, make sure to go do that. Um, today's challenge was to create a space decal. Um, and then you, you know, by wrapping text around and all the fun things and you know, you're able to use that um, kind of little space badge from challenge number two. So um, yeah, go head over and watch the replay and then submit your challenges mm -hmm. so that we can review them later. Yeah. Yeah, congratulations, Hamad, that's a lot of stickers. I know, <laughs> it's a hundred stickers you can use for just about everything. Yeah. Good morning, Allie. Aw, <laughs> hi Allison. <laughs> So I've uh, imported this okay. photo back at 16 by 10, and mm -hmm. now I'm taking four by five crops out of it. So I'll take this first four by crop by just pushing it all the way to one side here. Okay. And then I'll just say, that's done. Cool. And then that will be the first half of our input there. Awesome. So you can just put part one. Nice. And then we'll export it out at the at uh, resolution settings. settings that I like to do for iPhone, yeah. which is about 22. So if you weren't in watching like, yesterday's stream, um, Tom actually gave us some really good advice about exporting for Instagram, which mm -hmm. is really cool. So these are the settings that he was using. And yeah, you wanna talk a little bit yeah, about that? Yeah, so when I export it out at these uh, dimensions, I find that the image shows up much clearer and crisp yes. on Instagram just because it fits the size of the phone much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because sometimes, you know, when you export, you kind of looks a little fuzzy and you're kind of like yeah, wondering so like, what's happening? You might be exporting at too high of quality yeah. and it can't actually um, render that properly mm -hmm. into a, a crisp image. Yeah, so you're basically doing the work for Instagram instead of having Instagram compress your image exactly. um, for you. So super, super important, you guys, because, you know, definitely want to get the best quality um, out there. Yeah, and so something when, too, like about the, um, like the brightness too of editing. Yeah, so when I'm editing, I like to adjust my light bar just a little bit down um, because it sort of matches what most people have on their phones. Mm -hmm. Most people's phones aren't at full max all yeah. the time. Although so I'm the one that's always at max, but <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> so if you just push it down a little bit, it'll counter yeah. for people that are full max or a little bit right, lower. Right, right, makes sense. And that way sense. your image is a little more versatile to yes. do. Yes. <laughs> 
So we'll export that cool. one there. All right, so that's part one. That's part one, and cool. then we go back into crop, and then we just take that same four by five, and we slide it over. Nice. To the other side here. That's so easy. And then press done, and then we'll just export that side out. Very cool. And put in part two. Part two. two. <laughs> Um, David has a question. What is the most difficult part of creating, doing your photos? Um, sometimes it's finding the motivation to go out and mm -hmm. um, do more personal stuff as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, it's just, um, it can get repetitive or you right, know, boring right. or uncomfortable to get up like really early <laughs> yeah. in the morning every time and stay out late for sunset yeah. and shoot all these. Yeah right conditions and stuff like that. It's all about that patience, for sure. <laughs> yeah, and then getting to the different locations, whether you're taking big road trips yeah. or flying. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you're doing strenuous activity getting up to these places or, or you know, mm -hmm. traveling. Like, it's a lot. It's yeah, a lot exactly. of, you know, mind energy. Like for and... this photo here, I was um, dragging all my gear out oh into the back country. Yeah. And then, like, thankfully, there's a bus that leads you out to Wonder Lake, which is mm -hmm. where this is sort of at. This is called Reflection Pond in Denali. And it's about, I think, 83 miles mm -hmm. in to the park. Wow. And so you get dropped off there, and then you can pick up your camp at Wonder Lake, and then you can just head out into the bush with wow. your camera gear and just shoot. Yeah. And there's no trails or um, anything like that. You're just allowed to You're just free roam, free roam. <laughs> wow. out in Great Alaska. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> so then we'll go back to the desktop here, Kay. and then we have our two images. Awesome. And then we'll just take those, and I like to just send them over to AirDrop. Okay, all and right. I'm going like to show you a little something. Pull it up on my phone here. Just gotta get my airdrop. That one's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe make sure your airdrop is on on your phone. Oh, there you go. Nice. Sometimes it takes a little second. <laughs> yeah. 2017 laptop, 2019 phone. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of delay. Ooh, yes. Exciting. All right. So, All right, so then the there phone. you go. So we have both photos on the phone here now, and then we'll open up Instagram and we'll go into making a post here. Wow. And so we'll select multiple images here. And then you want to make sure you have your first image selected. That will be right, on so your left. Right, so that it's... <laughs> and then you have your second image sense. selected. That will be on mm -hmm. your right. And then we'll hit next. And then you'll see the preview here of the two photos. That is awesome, you guys. And then just hit next again. You can check the preview one more time. And wow. then it shows it seems That's so there. interactive and just makes it so like extra cool. <laughs> we can even post this up here in Adobe Live. You guys, this is real time. <laughs> real time. <laughs> All right. And we'll share that one. It's so cool. So now if you wanted to, you could go on Instagram or just view on here yes. and check out the slide. Go post check it out, you guys. It's Tom Parker without the E. Taking a minute. A little to second. Upload. Yep. That's so fun, though. That's really cool. <laughs> it just makes it like a little extra fun to be able to like slide yeah, over and see the full a, image, you know? Just gotta wait a minute for it to finish. Mm -hmm. You just didn't get onto the Wi Fi. With yeah, the no worries. I mean, you know, things can, just take time yeah. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tim, for putting in the link to his Instagram. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Um, Almost there. We'll just get some. Yes. We'll just look into some other stuff while that's loading. Perfect. Stuff. That's so fun. It's a really cool feature that they um, added for sure, which helps like play around with. Yeah, so you can get a little mm -hmm. more creative with a your photos too. A little more creative, too. yeah, for sure. Definitely. Ooh, Ahmad says, um, "Would you like to start a YouTube channel after this? Now you look confident on camera." <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm, if people are interested, I yeah, might have yeah. I mean, people. Are, I think people are just always interested. Yeah, for sure, like definitely. Okay, Maybe awesome. I'll just see if I can log onto the Wi-Fi since the cellular doesn't seem too quick in here. <laughs> and then David's asking, how many times have you gotten lost looking for a spot to shoot? 
Um, <laughs> I've uh, one real memorable story would be going out to Yosemite one night. Oh my like, gosh! I spent a few nights in Yosemite, and then <laughs> um, it just it just um, got really dark when I was wandering around the valley, and I got so dark there's no street lights there I couldn't Whoa. find my way back to oh, my no. camper van at night and um, so, so I ended up wandering around for close to two hours hour oh and a half gosh. or so and that is insane <laughs> but I eventually made it back to the parking <laughs> lot that's so scary <laughs> but yeah I didn't couldn't really run into any people because it was so laid out and I was shooting late yeah, into the night. Yeah, for sure. So we got the live posted here now. Ooh, awesome. And so as you can see, you can just slide from one to the side to the other and you get a much more in-depth view and sort of interactive view of the photo. That is so cool. You guys have to try this. Um, you can even um, expand it even further um, to do it like into like three, a three-part three slide part. and yeah. stuff like that if you got a really narrow image that you would like to mm -hmm. show. <laughs> Tim's like, two hours? Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's insane. It's getting a little cold, too. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's really cool. Thanks for showing us that. No it problem. looks awesome. Um, Vincent's asking, do you ever use scripts, actions, or apps to export for certain crops? Um, no, I can't say that I have. I just um, Typically sort of, do the cropping. Yeah. Yeah, in Lightroom. The 16 by 10, I just played around with what would be the dimensions that you mm -hmm. need two four by fives out right, of it. Right, right. And then I came across that 16 by 10 worked for that, so yeah. then I just worked that into That's the workflow. That's awesome. That's really cool. Thanks for showing us that. No problem. Um, I mean, along with like <laughs> adventures and, and getting lost and all of that stuff, um, we were kind of talking about your Africa trip um, yeah. after the stream yesterday. And yeah, I would love to hear more about that and maybe you can kind of dive into yeah, some Yeah, we can of that dive stuff. into that for sure. Yeah. So Hi, Eric Sue. Thanks for joining. <laughs> we went over to um, East Africa, Kenya and Uganda for just under a month there and we traveled around and got to see a lot of amazing animals yeah. out in the um, Maasai Mara. Mm -hmm. And then we also went out into Uganda into the Bawindi Impenetrable Forest. Whoa. And we got to hike with the mountain gorillas out there. Oh my so that's crazy. Yeah. And this is a, like, kind of a little bit out of your comfort zone, right? As far as... Yeah, so I don't shoot a whole lot of animals mm -hmm. uh, usually, but it's a really cool subject to work with yeah. at the same time yeah. because it is in the element that I like to be in, yeah. but it's adding that different factor instead of a person that's yeah. an animal yeah. and animals that I never see wild at all. Yeah, definitely. And so... Wow. Oh my gosh, you were... It's like... You got to see... You're like right there yeah, in detail. leopard that's coming crazy. through. Crazy. He was stalking some antelope there. Oh my gosh. One of these guys. And they're taking naps out there. Oh, that's <laughs> so cute. We'll just go through <laughs> some photos of Africa just to give you an idea of the trip and stuff like that. And then we'll settle on a photo or two yeah, of like maybe awesome. the gorillas at the end here. And we'll edit out a gorilla photo because the yeah. lighting was very difficult in the forest right, because yeah. it was about midday and there's harsh light coming down mm -hmm. through. Yeah, how was how, what was that challenge like? I mean, what what, what I, did you have to adjust and do? <laughs> <laughs> I was just working as hard as I could to keep up with the gorillas yeah. because they can move so effortlessly through the right, forest, but right. for us it just takes so much effort. Yeah. <laughs> Course. And um, I was just sweating and carrying my camera was gear. Was it hot? I mean, it must oh, have been yeah. really it was, warm. It was very warm. <laughs> it's probably 35 plus there. Wow. That's crazy. Michelle says, beautiful animals. Yeah. You're so, like, close, too. I mean, what lens were you using? I was today? using the 100 to 400 oh, here. Oh, very so nice. Kind of I'm able, able to, to stay a little further back and, you know, right. get the yeah, animals yeah. Don't want to be too close. <laughs> yeah, That's awesome. So and we got to see some hippos sort of hanging out in the oh water gosh. there with their little baby. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> and and I'm sure this is like, it's very, it's very different to having like, a, you know, a human in your shots yeah, where like so you can kind of help direct them or tell them to do something. Exactly. You got to wait for those moments that yeah. sort of capture yeah. you. Yeah. You have to be like really like on it and just like constantly be. Oh yeah. Thank you, Tim. I'm Canadian. So 35 equals 95. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, here. Tim, for that conversion. <laughs> I always forget that. <laughs> Kirsty says, wow, amazing. Yeah, really, really fun. And we uh, went over and saw the oh elephants and the Maasai Mara there. Wow. This is all in Maasai Mara. That is incredible. And we just saw them yeah, grazing and eating. <laughs> 
Um, Kirsten has a question. What camera do you shoot with? And you kind of said this a little bit earlier, but... Yeah, but no problem. Um, I shoot with a Canon 5D Mark IV. I find that it just works well for every situation that I want to shoot in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a little bit bigger than the mirrorless, but I find it's a little bit more of a workhorse still than yeah, the mirrorless camera. Yeah, for sure. Um, Haman's asking, or he's saying, I have a problem with Instagram. My Lightroom photos lose colors when I upload on Instagram. Any suggestions that you might have? Um, my suggestion would be to look into what phone that you're uploading it to, because I found that mm -hmm. if you upload it to like an Android phone compared to an iPhone, it sort of, the colors, the colors shift between the two. And on also it. on my screens at home, I have like a bigger LCD that will display different than my iMac. Right, right, yeah. I know, it's all it's all the crazy, colors, like the different screens yeah. and the calibration and all so that. So maybe either your phone has... Um, oh yeah, Tim, great. Um, question are you using the right color profile you know yeah. that all that stuff matters exactly like your color profile and your mm -hmm. phone even can be vibrant or you can yes. be taking yes. stuff away saturate desaturating it. yeah and sometimes like you know I know some people like to use like the um, like the nighttime vision or mode or the uh, um, yeah. or when it like puts on like an orange filter yeah, on there yeah. I, um, for sure the blue, or like when you're blue yeah shift or the blue shift yeah so cool <laughs> Tim says, taking too. photos while they are eating. How rude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, got to get the shot. <laughs> and how long were you out there, like, shooting? Like, what, what, what was the time? We got about an hour or two. Oh, no, sorry. That's not right. Um, we went out early in the morning, probably around 7 or 8, mm -hmm. and came back around 12. So about four hours out okay. there. Okay, cool. In Masai Mara, and then I was shooting a bit of stuff for Columbia Sportswear at the same time, and just nice. like, so us viewing the elephants there. Mm -hmm. and, oh my gosh. <gasps> little ostrich guy. Wait, that's so funny, because when Voodoo <laughs> Val was giving the challenge earlier, she used like an ostrich in her challenge, oh, and it was she? so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's like... I, go, I gotta send her this yeah, one. Yeah, you so gotta send her this one. <laughs> can use it in our next challenge. Later. <laughs> Shout out, Voodoo Val. <laughs> awesome. Hi, Richards. <laughs> Thanks then, for joining us. We're here with Tom Parker. He's an uh, outdoor adventurer, photographer. I'll make sure to follow him because he's got some amazing photographs. Um, they're just stunning. Just sort of going through the Maasai Mara right now. Yes. Yeah, and, and so, maybe we can even kind of ask the chat which, you know, images, yeah, which image you want to work with. Maybe give them like, yeah, pick two sure. from, and then we, we can We can sort of you. maybe work off one of these giraffe photos here. Um, yeah, people always love, love <laughs> being able to choose. Giraffe is just a, such an interesting animal to see. Yeah, and they're so see, cool. I just shot this one brighter here, mm -hmm. and like, uh, you can pull this one back too. Oh yeah. But I was, the giraffes during the day, they like to find these random trees that are out in the Masai Mara uh -huh. and just hide from the sun in the yeah, shade. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's so cute. Um, I hosted another creative recently. Um, she goes by Swopes, mm. and she uses a lot of, you know, composites a lot of giraffes okay. into her oh, city nice. images. And it's so interesting, like, but it's so, it's like random, but it's so fun. Because giraffes, again, are like, have such a cool, like, they're so, Cool. I don't know. Yeah, they're so tall. And when I saw them in real life, I yeah, was like, you're like, whoa. <laughs> Where did this come yeah. from? <laughs> so cool. And so yeah, we got fairly close at some point. So we yeah, want really to do close. some like that's beautiful kind of abstract stuff where you could just crop, just having the head come mm -hmm. into the frame mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Is your um, like desktop? Uh, from like a giraffe texture? Or? Yeah, exactly. Beautiful. So this desktop here is um, a giraffe skin shot really close up on the side at 400 wow. mils. But then I still had to crop the photo in right, right, to yeah. get it this yeah. close. But it's crazy how much detail there still is, even yeah. as you're cropping in really. So that's the advantage of having like a higher megapixel camera. Yeah, yeah for I sure. I forget what the Mark IV is, but 36 or something like that. <laughs> and So it's enough details that you can actually crop your image almost in half and still wow. have a clean image. Yeah. Awesome. Michelle says, the giraffe with the tree. <laughs> Got to sure. vote for a giraffe with the tree. We can do that one, or we, we'll just give another option yes. here. Yes, so option oh. A is the one of the giraffe shots. 
And maybe option Or we B. could do like a portrait shot of one of the children in the village later too. Oh, and this is like it's a completely a different, different thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I don't usually shoot What was that experience all... like? It's just, um, I always like shooting new subjects and stuff like yeah. that. So kind I always find yourself. it. Yeah, exactly. Find a, a nice challenge to push yourself a bit and get out of your comfort zone. Beautiful. Going along the comment earlier, mm -hmm. you can always yeah try shooting different stuff. Or, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes you might learn uh, certain things from shooting a subject that you're not used to, and maybe mm -hmm. even apply that to your normal current. Yeah, style, exactly. You know? So like, I do incorporate some mm -hmm. of my editing styles if I were gonna edit like a portrait as well. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. And then we have the Maasai sort of greeting us as we came in there. And <gasps> we, um, Beautiful. Love the colors that they're wearing. Yeah, so, so you can see with the megapixel here, you can really punch in more and still get that detail. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. Cool, yeah. yeah, so give us your options, guys. Um, we have option A with giraffes, or if you want to see um, Tom edit a portrait of, yeah. you know, with the people. Let us know in the chat. Or even some elephants. But or yeah. some elephants, yeah. Elephants we'll are always real cool. We'll keep it at those three, though. Yes, <laughs> yeah. That's so fun. <laughs> David says, I love that shirt that the kid is wearing. Oh, <laughs> cute. Uh, Tim says, portrait, please. Yeah. Tim says, it's portrait. Fun. We'll just wait a little bit until yeah. we get a couple more answers or suggestions. Ooh, question from Charlie. How can I add my logo to my photos using Lightroom? That one, I, I think you'd want to use Photoshop for. Um, I'm not sure how you'd do it in Lightroom or if you could. Mm -hmm. um, What's your take on that, by the way? I mean, I feel like, you know. You can watermark your photos easy by on the export here, though. So when you're exporting, mm -hmm. um, it'll give you an option at the bottom here to watermark your photo. Oh. So then you could either upload your logo into the watermark section there and then paste it straight on, or you could put your own signature on. So you could do it that way, I yeah, guess. I just yeah. have to think about it for a second. What's your opinion on watermarking and, and putting your logos on um, photos? Like I can see the advantages of it, but I personally don't do it myself yeah. just because I like to have that image sort of free of anything like mm -hmm. that and distracting. Yeah, yeah. But I can see the legal advantages to it sometimes yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a win but lose. Sort yeah, of yeah. It just comes down to preference. Yeah. At the end of the day, for sure. Um, okay. Kirsty says giraffe with the tree. Um, Michelle says portrait. Hamad says portrait. Okay, we've got like three portraits yeah, so we've far. Yeah, we got a lot of portraits. So let's do a portrait. I think we're gonna go with the together. portrait. Plus, it's fun to see a little bit different. You know. Yeah, I don't usually show, don't usually show any portrait work or anything yeah. like that. So I cool. love that. Just had a little bit of so cool. coming down there. But <laughs> love it. Such good detail. I love the the little like light coming in on the right side. Yeah. If I was Beautiful. a bit more of a portrait photographer, I could have thought about maybe like asking him to, to just like tilt rotate his head a little, a little bit, bit oh, more, okay, and then yeah. it wouldn't be so much in the shadow. But mm -hmm. in Lightroom, it's easy enough to pull back. Yeah, definitely. So for this one. I'm going to just crop it right away just because I find the top distracting and I mm -hmm. just want to focus more on the portrait itself. Mm -hmm. And then I like to use the rule of thirds and sort of put his eyes around that line. Yeah, beautiful. And ears. And then we can work on the exposure here. Very nice. So then we can just take it up a bit to see where you like the face at, mm -hmm. like the shadow darker areas I like uh -huh. to focus on. And then you can focus on like these highlights later on that are too much. Yeah. And so you can pull that back again and just create that look of mm -hmm. more even lighting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, Tim says, if people really want to steal your image, they would probably just crop out the watermark. Exactly. So yeah. it's not going to do a whole lot unless you just watermark Plaster right across it all the whole over. Thing. <laughs> yeah. Chan Hanks says, agreed, or content aware, cloned out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And then, well, I, I think know. at some point, I mean, I know for you, I mean, you're, you're Instagram following, you've got like so many people like reposting and resharing your work. Like, yeah. was it kind of crazy in the beginning when a lot of people were reposting It's your sort work of like exciting, you know? You're, yeah. like, you're happy to get your work out there and get it seen by lots of people. Um, now I just, I don't really pay attention to it at all, but it's definitely nice that people repost and yeah. share my photos and look yeah, at them and stuff sure. like that. It's just, I find it very mentally taxing if you try and 
take care of take all that care of stuff all that, and like yeah. focus on the numbers and stuff like that. It just, it really takes the enjoyment out of photography. Yeah. If you can yeah. change it to that. Yeah, for sure. And so. It's a good mindset for sure. Bring this up just a little bit more just to bring it into him. Portrait wise. It's beautiful. Just a little less distracting and then center it just a bit more. Beautiful. Just because his body's off to one side a little bit more than the other, mm -hmm. so you can bring the head over just a little bit to the one side to create a bit more evenness in the photo. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Haman says, can you please explain histogram while editing? Histogram. Yeah. So the histogram up here is going to affect your uh, blacks and your whites, and it's going to show you like when you clip and go too far. So you can actually adjust the histogram here if you wanted to and see if you drag it too far to the left, it's gonna really mm -hmm. push your blacks in. And then if you wanna go further to the left, it's gonna bring up all your whites as well. So it's just a good indication of where your colors and your highlights mm -hmm. and darknesses sort of fall. Yeah. And so if you're finding that your lines are on the left or on the right, it might be too far for what you're trying to do. Yeah. And just might just blow good, up the image. It's a good visual way of like knowing when to like not push it too far, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. For sure. Definitely. And then What was it like when you were photographing these people? I mean it's it, were you kind of Telling them anything, or just capturing them? As I they... was um, just capturing them, sort of as they were coming out to see us, and mm -hmm. um, I didn't ask them to do anything. That's why I, like, I yeah. didn't ask for the head tilt. Yeah, or anything yeah, of like course. That. I like to capture more natural moments and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So images might not work out as well sometimes, but you get a more authentic sort of right. feel. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, this child just came out to us and was interested in us coming and seeing Aww. them, and so. I snapped a quick photo as he came out. Yeah, and, he was and his shirt, so cute. Catch me if you can. <laughs> so then for this here, if we want to bring it into him a bit more, we can use a new tool, which is the circular gradient here. Mm -hmm. And so it's like the horizontal gradient we used yesterday, but in a circular okay. pattern. Okay, cool. And so it'll create like a vignette effect or the opposite of vignette if you mm -hmm. um, inverse it, uh, invert it at the bottom here. Yeah. So we can see what it's selecting here is ah, around his face. That's really good. That's a good way to see what, because then you can move it around too. Yeah, exactly. It. And you can adjust these ovals here to really mm. focus and widen mm. where you want the perspective to be. Very nice. And so if we just go like this a bit and so just cool. keep it off his face because that's what we want to show the most. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, oops. We'll just go back into that break. Um, Talon says, I didn't know I needed a Lightroom live stream in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Talon, for tuning in. Yeah, this is super awesome. It's, and this is the first time that Tom is sharing um, his editing yeah, workflow. So I'm so glad you're enjoying it. If you're enjoying this live stream, make sure to watch the one from yesterday, too, because he went over a lot of really fun stuff, especially more nature related, too. So, yeah. um, a lot Today of good tips and tricks. Today, we're focusing on stuff that's yeah. a little bit outside my wheelhouse, but I like to play around with this kind yeah, of stuff and yeah. always push my photography. Yeah, it's always about learning, and, um, you know, that's what Adobe Live is all about. And mm -hmm. we're just happy that people can tune in and really yeah. learn from various creatives of all different types of industries. For sure. Um, that use Adobe products, so very cool. And then we can just see as we want to push down the exposure just to draw him out a bit more. You get mm -hmm. a, those details out of the back, less distracting. You can even like play around with the whites there too and just get rid of the whites a bit more. Mm -hmm. And it just sort of pulls it into him a bit more there. Yeah. But just see what very it's nice. good at. And yeah, it's all just about playing around with the sliders and seeing what you like and what you don't like. And then as you go, as you edit more and more, you'll find you get a workflow already in your head that you're like, oh, I see this image and yeah. I think it needs this and this and this. Mm -hmm. And then you'll automatically just go to your bar and start adjusting. Yeah. Do you ever tailor your editing or any of that when it comes to like versus like your personal projects and then like the, what, the client projects? Or do you typically? Um, generally, I just stick to my style because I feel that's why the clients they hired they came me. came to you, yeah. It's my style is what they're looking for, so why change it yeah, to something of else? Course. Yeah. If they're looking for that different style, then, then maybe, maybe it's they should not go a good partnership. Yeah, yeah. Like, go to a different <laughs> yeah, photographer or something. 
I have、mm. done some real estate photography a little bit,、okay. but not like architecture, just、okay. like homes and homes, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And I do have to change my edit style for that. Yes, yeah, because it is a very because. They're not looking for like the same sort of thing.、Exactly. They just want a nice,、yeah. clean-looking home. Yeah,、like、yeah, brightly lit, very <laughs> you know, light-filled. Do you have any、um, anything that you like listen to or like watch while you're editing? Like, what does your yeah? Like- <laughs> actually, I like to either have some music on in the background or have like Netflix or something、yeah. playing on the side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always like to ask that to people because everyone's different. I, I you know, someone's it, like either watching.、Um, I find the silence、Netflix. is too much. Like it is too much. You get kind of d- distracted a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like you almost need to either listen to a podcast or listen to some good music. You just you need、know. that little extra little, something. Little background you know? noise. <laughs> Even though you're not paying attention on it, it just、yeah. provides that extra feel. It's almost like I mean I've heard that you kind of need to do a little something while you're. Like to stay focused, if that makes sense. Like some、yeah. people like to doodle while they're also working. Yeah.、Um, like little side doodles、sure. or something like that.、Um, It's always good to take like a little mental break. And mental break, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Do you have any tips for like when you're editing like a shoot or like images? Like, is there anything that you do that、um, helps you? Um, like when I'm on the job, my mind is just fully immersed into the mm-hmm, job, mm-hmm. so it's not really any rest time then, but. In my own personal stuff, it's、um, I like to just sort of go out and what we call like forest bathing. You go into the forest <laughs> and you just enjoy yourself. Oh, out I、there. like that. That's、and、such a cool, fun game. And you just take in the vibes. And <laughs> forest bathing. Exactly. I need to try that. <laughs> and it's just amazing how much it calms your、yeah. self down. I know. I know. Every time that I'm out in the forest or just in nature or even like on hikes, like it is so peaceful、mm-hmm. and so. Refreshing and like the air is clean. It's therapy. It is therapy. It's literally therapy. <laughs> Very cool.、Um, <laughs> David says silence is deafening. <laughs> <laughs> Agree. Oh, Jen Eric says it's time for me to upload some photography to Behance. The stream really rubs off on me. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I'm That's glad、great. that you're learning and you know enjoying the stream.、Yeah. Really fun. And then for here, I usually、mm-hmm. don't do too much with the clarity, like going down. But for this one, just a little bit down, just clarity-wise, just to bring in that nice sort of blur into the back、mm-hmm. a bit more, and then focus into the face a bit. Yeah.、Um, you can see like dehaze just darkens the back a bit more there. We won't add too much of that. Nice.、Uh, we can add just a little bit of color to his shirt a bit more. Very cool. Yes,、uh, Tim. Thank you.、Much. You can also watch older Adobe live streams for some inspiration. There's so many good streams, you guys.、Mm-hmm. You have to just dive in, and they're all available for free. Literally, this is such a great resource, especially for anyone who's just learning or just wants to, you know, get、yeah. inspired.、Um, and some of them, some of the streams too, give a lot of really good tips as far as like business goes to like create like the business side of creative creativity.、Yeah. You know. Which is very important. I think that's, you know, you kind of were lucky in the、yeah. fact that you got to study business in school,、yeah. but also picked up this amazing yeah, hobby and turned it into your career. Yeah, just sort of worked out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thanks for joining, Mr. Emiliano. So then、Hello. here, I'm just sort of playing around with the luminance of the greens in the back here because、mm-hmm. I just like that little bit of extra color to create that contrast between the two. Beautiful. So just a little bit there. You know, you've got a lot of fun colors happening, especially with this T-shirt and the background,、mm-hmm. and you can. That. We can also do a little bit of split toning on this one, which adds just a little bit of a different feel、mm. to the image. We、uh, haven't done split toning. Yeah,、yet. you haven't done split toning. Can you explain that a little bit?、Maybe? So split toning. Well, yeah. It, so you can either choose to adjust your highlights here or your shadows, and so it will focus on the colors. And、um, so in this bar here, you can see that there's different colors along the bar,、mm-hmm. and wherever you select the color. So I, I'm thinking I want it just a little bit warmer here. So I'll go to the orangey yellow side there, and then you can increase the saturation on it, and、oh. it will just push that color into the highlights a bit more.、Got、and、it. so it'll give that warmer feel into your、mm-hmm. highlights. And then you can also do the same thing with your shadows. Like if you wanted to warm it up a bit、yes. in the shadows too, you can push those up, and it just gives that little bit more richness to your photo、mm-hmm. sometimes. Yeah, that's so fun. And you can see where we've come from and wow, to here. Wow, what a difference! That's、and、stunning.、So、I'd even like to see maybe a horizontal 
gradient put in here just to mm. take away a little uh -huh. bit of the bokeh or like the whiteness there. Yeah. And, just and really draw center into in him a bit more. Into the port yeah. Into the person. And I find like when it drops the exposure on that area too, you get a little bit more detail in these circles that give a little extra to mm -hmm, the photo too. Mm -hmm. The bokeh. Very cool. Lovely. And let's see here. Go down. Again, you can sort of go in and you can sort of focus in on yeah, different areas see the here. Details. And then see how much you want to push your sharpening if you want. See, like, if we raise it a bit, you actually get a little bit more out of this face mm -hmm, here mm -hmm. without going too far. And then you can just take a I little bit of noise I just love that he's noise um, looking straight at you. <laughs> it's yeah. such a great moment <laughs> to he's capture. He's very curious. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you look like, you know, with your big camera. Like, yeah. <laughs> He's slightly intimidating, but he's like, they what is were that? Very curious in like a lot That's of my really camera sweet. equipment and yeah. stuff. And I had the drone out at one of oh, the villages. Oh, he did. Oh my gosh. And one of the ladies, she had never seen one before, I'm assuming, because she just sort of took her hand yeah. and reached up and tried to grab the oh blades as they were spinning. I was like, no, 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 you can't do that. It's like dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's yeah. so fun. But yeah, you definitely have to be careful with drones. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, I'm sort of happy with how this image sort Beautiful. of came out here. You can brighten up his face a little bit with the uh, selective oh, the adjust selective too. Adjustments. Yeah, perfect. Just whatever you like, like in your photos. Mm -hmm. Some people like a darker image, some people like lighter. Mm -hmm. um, let's see if we can add a little clarity. Beautiful. Hello, Alok. Alok. Hopefully I'm saying that right. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Working on this fun little portrait of this little boy in Africa um, from Tom's trip, mm -hmm. which is super fun. It's not something that I usually shoot, yeah. but I like to show my workflow on photos that aren't landscapes or adventure photography, just to show how it can transpose into yeah. other mm -hmm. types of photography. Yeah, definitely. So Very yeah, fun. so that one's all done cool. now. I'd say I wouldn't take it any further than that, really. Okay, awesome. And then we can jump into, maybe we'll just do the giraffe. Yeah, uh, we'll giraffe do the giraffe. Well I, mean, I know some people had voted for the giraffe. <laughs> the giraffe. The giraffe. The yeah. giraffe with the tree, I think, is one that I, um, someone had suggested. <laughs> so we'll take this vertical one here. <laughs> I'm assuming that one was like, see you later, pasta is calling. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> You're going to miss out on the giraffe. <laughs> But you can always tune in later when you watch the replay. So exactly. Yes. Just want to see if there was a horizontal one that I oh, wanted to yeah. do. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And just, just to remind you all, we do have about 21 minutes until we head over to Discord to review some of those space theme challenges. So uh, make sure that you are finishing those up in the next 20 minutes, and we'll go ahead and review those. One tip that you could keep in mind when you're doing mm -hmm. the slide photos is that when you crop it to a four by five and you want to have a little bit more interest on the left side mm -hmm. than the right side to draw the viewer in more. Um, say this giraffe was on the right side here mm -hmm. and we want to put it on the left for the slide. You could just right click and you can transform it and you can flip your uh, photo horizontally. Ooh. So then you can just put the subject that you want on the left or the right hand side if it's on either side of the Got image. It. Yeah, yeah. And then that will create just a little bit more draw for your images. When people are going through, they'll see that little extra animal or something yes. and then they can swipe and, and get the full swipe. image. Oh, smart. Yeah. Love that. It's like intriguing and you're like, oh, what's that? And you just like slide over. Exactly. <laughs> Jan Eric's like, pasta la vista, baby. <laughs> <laughs> We love puns, you guys. <laughs> so we'll start with this giraffe one here. Just a cool perspective to yeah. see such a large animal yes. underneath a tree, but it seems small at the it same time. It seems small, yeah. And <laughs> it is a really fun perspective. So just looking at the angle of my Yeah, yeah, it looks here. like a slightly. And so we'll just drag the bar nice. and then it will auto go. adjust mm -hmm. it there. The tree's definitely like leaning a little bit, so definitely it's yeah. good that you're doing it from the 
So actual. yeah, you always want to find what your anchor, or your most like solid anchor points yeah. are, because the tree is not very reliable. But the no. mountain from tip to tip and the reflection in the Denali one was more reliable. Yes, yeah. And then this one is just like the flat the Serengeti surface, horizon yeah, there, for sure. the grass, but not taking into account of the hill. Yes. And then we can sort of crop in a bit more just to give a bit more view to the actual cool. subject. And that's nice that you have that ability to kind of crop in tight and still have so much detail. Yeah, that's the great thing about having a high megapixel mm -hmm, camera. Mm -hmm. Oh, Charlie says, great work. Have a blessed day. <laughs> have a good day. Thank you. Uh, so I just, Personally, I don't like the color of the grass so much okay. on that day, so I would change it a bit with mm -hmm. a horizontal gradient right off the bat. And I just like to lower it down a bit, and then can tint yeah. it a bit into the greener side too. Yeah. That already, ooh, that already makes such a difference. If you just play around with your, um, your temperature and your tint a bit mm -hmm. there, you can sort of manipulate colors into what you want them more there. That's so beautiful, yeah. And I like just like a little bit of greener vibe mm -hmm. to it instead of just the yellow grass. Yeah, that makes such a huge difference. And then you can take up the shadows on the giraffe there so you get so more you get detail. More detail yeah. It brings it up a bit in the tree there, but it's fine. <laughs> And then we can you take can always go back in and do selective editing, which is really exactly. nice. It's such a cute giraffe. <laughs> and then you animal. can actually just go into the giraffe oh a bit more. And so then cute. if you wanted to work on him and make him stand out a bit more, you can use your brush. And then <laughs> I'm like just smiling, looking at the giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so, it's so cute. Can give him a little bit it's more. It's such color. fun, like pattern and texture on, on its body. Yeah, apparently they're like fingerprints for what? giraffes, so really? they all have their own unique pattern. Oh my gosh, believe. that's so cool. Yeah. So do like when you're out on, the, on this trip, like did they do a lot of like explaining of like you yeah, know, the so animals we were and all that stuff? Out with some like guides and Very stuff, cool. and uh, they would explain everything that they knew mm -hmm. and any questions that we had mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. How did this trip to Africa even come about? Like, you know? Um, we were planning a trip to Europe and maybe Southeast Asia, but then we found the flight connections were a little bit too long in between mm -hmm. and it, just a lot more flying. But then um, my partner Ali's always wanted to go to see the gorillas yeah. and chimps and stuff. So I figured since we were going into Europe, it'd be a good time just to go down and yeah. drop down into Africa. That's so we awesome. went for a month down there and. That's really cool. What a cool opportunity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Claude says, unicorns aren't real, but here's a horse with a 10 foot neck. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So. Love it. So right there, I just went a bit over so we can show where I'm selecting, but I just, you can deselect by on a Mac with option here and you can just run yes. the line back. So it's not affecting the sky so much. That's really nice, just a little bit more. And then you can continue working with this on too. And then on the bar over here, you can um, use your panel to just slide up and down while you're zoomed in. Yeah. So it makes it easier while you're painting closer in. I know, I always make the mistake of like zooming when I want, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> so definitely going over to that little viewfinder and moving that around. Oh, Eric Sue says, I want to go to Africa too. <laughs> Yeah, I yes. highly recommend it. It's recommend it. Amazing experience. Very cool. All the new culture, mm -hmm. like the stuff. Oh, yeah. And you're just like painting in what you're going to be working on. So cute. <laughs> so this will just give like a little bit extra to the giraffe and mm -hmm. make them stand out a bit more. So then you can go to the fit again. It. And then you can sort of play around from here, what it looks good from a bit further back. Mm -hmm. So that's a bit darker. Clarity adds a little bit more to them there too. Mm -hmm. uh, play around with the exposure a bit too. Oh yeah, that really makes a makes a draft pop. I just don't want <laughs> him to pop too much because he is in a shadow. So. 
<laughs> Tim says, who said uh, unicorns aren't real? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, if they aren't real, why is there an emoji for them? <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you, Tim. <laughs> So since this was such a like high harsh yeah. lighting day, um, you want to keep your edits more like on the lighter side than the darker side, mm -hmm. just because if you go too dark, it sort of gives it an unnatural feel. I find. Yeah. And then you can also go into the tree here and give it a little bit more detail by painting through. I really like to use my brushes and just yeah. focus on different areas of the photo that mm -hmm. I want like the viewer's eye to be drawn to and to have a bit more detail and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And these are things that like most people, sometimes they just like you take it over to Photoshop to do, but you can totally do all of this in, in Lightroom as well. Yeah, so, so I've changed my workflow to just be on Lightroom just because I found it easier to work with one mm -hmm. app. Yeah, definitely. But I am using Premiere Pro now a bit more and working with the video editing. Oh, and cool. Like that. That's awesome. <laughs> Tim says, even the blue in the sky is really bright. Would you darken it to bring out the clouds or? Um, personally, I like a lighter sky most of the time, not too much of a dark. Um, mm -hmm. I just, for some reason, personally don't like a dark sky. So if you wanted to bring out the clouds a bit more, I would suggest maybe even just taking a brush and using a uh, dehaze a bit there and you can just get like a little more texture out of the clouds if you wanted to. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. And so you can see the oh, clouds sort of nice. coming in a bit more there, mm -hmm. but by not keeping your blues. Another way you can do it is if you wanted to adjust everything down. Yeah. But then if you wanted your blues to come back, you just go to your luminancy and then Ooh. you could boost your blues back, but sort of keep the detail in the clouds a bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's, there's so many different ways. Yeah, you can just sort of like go through <laughs> Kind of play and, around with everything. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. And I would also just add a little <laughs> gradient at the bottom here just to focus up towards the tree a bit mm -hmm. more. Claude says, feels like I'm standing right there. <laughs> That's great. That's exactly what I'm going yeah, for. Yeah, I think that's a lot of your images are kind of like that. You yeah, kind like of want to put yourself there or like be there. Incorporate a person into the image. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Have that feeling of wanderlust and being there. Yeah, definitely. So I think the face on the draft could be just a little brighter. So go here. And yeah, that's this Lightroom is just playing around, mm -hmm. painting, and seeing <laughs> what works for you. Yeah, definitely. How did you, um, you know, kind of come up with your workflow or in your editing style over time? It was just developed over time. Like, so I would go and sort of like, I had an idea of what I wanted to create out of the photo, but I didn't know exactly how to get there, get that like um, finer detail like this. Mm -hmm. So I'd sort of look at uh, YouTube videos yeah. and Adobe videos about how to use the different processes mm -hmm. and then you're like oh that's a cool tip or trick so I'll take that and I'll incorporate yeah. it into my workflow. Very fun. And I know there's just like we're living in an age where everything is available to you or like there's so many things yeah. and people sharing stuff now and it's really cool. I think it's um, Hopefully moving in the direction of like I know some people like, like to like education. guard their secrets about yeah, it, but yeah. at the same time, I feel like if you're really interested in doing it and want to get it done, you can find all the information you want out there really mm -hmm. already. Yeah, definitely. And you know, was, we were kind of talking about this, this yesterday, but we're kind of shifting and moving forward into this space, this creative space where we can share more mm -hmm. and like make what we do like available you know, to yeah. others, especially anyone exactly. who's getting started. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're all using the same tools. There's nothing really, you know, different, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, everyone's unique. So nobody's going to edit the way that you do even it. Even though but. everyone's watching me edit right now, no one's going to come back and take photos the same way. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. they have the your same process eye. and your exactly. mind is very Someone different. Someone can come in, like recreate your photos, but they can never take your process out of your mind and what mm -hmm. your creativity mm -hmm. is. Exactly. Yeah. So Definitely. then I just wanted to create that more contrast in the tree here. So I just did a, did a selected brush, brought up the temperature, mm -hmm. warmed it up a bit. And then I also brought up the exposure contrast and dehaze a bit. And mm -hmm. then it just gives the tree just a little bit more punch in it. 
a little bit more detail. Yeah, yeah, I can already see that coming out. Let's it's not it. a whole lot, but it's just these little details make a difference in the photo in yes. the end. Yes, yes. Um, Alok is asking, what's more comfortable, a mouse or a Wacom? Uh, sorry, what's a Wacom? I think Wacom's like one of those like tablet things oh, with like okay. the pencils. I have never used a Wacom, so I couldn't tell you if that's <laughs> easier, but I definitely like a mouse over a trackpad. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. It would be interesting to like have one of those pens mm -hmm. that just yeah, like... Yeah, one of those like little tablets and stuff. I, I hear, at least from the people that I have hosted before, um, some of them like either have like a illustrative like background or design mm -hmm. background. So to them, like having something very like similar yeah. to a pen or a pencil seems a little more uh, I could easier for painting in things. So I've sort of just, yeah. <clears throat> um, it's just what you're just, used to, you know, it's a tool, they're all different I feel tools. like this mouse is almost like a paintbrush, you know, now. Yeah, it's just, yeah. When it's in my hand, I'm just using it as a paintbrush on the screen, like someone mm -hmm. would use like one of those pens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah sure. whatever you're more comfortable with, but I couldn't tell you if a Wacom is personally easier than this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Tim says, for painting and drawing, you should definitely consider using a tablet, but for everything else, a mouse or even a trackpad is totally enough. Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, Jen Eric says, I find the Wacom really useful when doing a lot of dodging and burning. Yeah, I yeah, can see how that would be really. For sure. Yeah, especially like right now where you're like kind of painting, you can kind of do it in a very painterly yeah. style. Another way is that we could go back to the range here and either select this color and then we could go in here and this, and then I could just go over the tree hopefully and it won't pick up too much stuff other than that. Uh, it's a little bit <laughs> It's not picking up the exact color that I want. I could do maybe luminance C and go on the darker side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you kind of touched on this little tool yesterday, yeah. which is really So fun. I just wanted to bring it back again and just show people that may not have seen it. And then you can yeah, also definitely. go in and obviously take out stuff with either on your brush or on your gradient. Um, you can always take away from the gradient mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Just awesome. like in yesterday's show. <laughs> yeah. And then I like using the show select and mask overlay sometimes when you're doing subjects like this because then it gives you a better idea of what you've actually painted instead of you painting over a tree like this and not knowing what you've hit and what yeah. you haven't. Yeah, yeah. Just sort of bump it out a bit more. Yeah. That looks good. So fun. Oh, artistic says amazing photo. That's awesome. Thank you. Just under seven minutes, you guys, yeah. um, until we go to Discord to review some of those challenges. So make sure that you are finishing up those last minute edits um, and make sure to submit. Um, there's a challenge tab right above the chat that you can uh, click on and it'll take you through the process of uh, submitting those challenges. So get them in. And then you can play around with the luminosity of the grass mm, too mm -hmm. a little bit. This so isn't fun. like one of the ideal shooting conditions, but you got to make the best that. Yeah. You, that yeah. You're Sometimes that's all you've got. <laughs> so, I personally prefer to shoot either in the morning or at night or like in the evening when mm -hmm. the sun sort of like you know have that glow to it, it gives mm -hmm. sort of all the subjects and everything yeah. sort of a better feel mm -hmm. in my opinion. Do you ever shoot like kind of more on like an overcast day or anything yeah, like that? So yeah, so those are sort of my favorite days yeah. because the whole area just becomes just like a of, big light box yeah. and everything is nicely diffused and the colors mm -hmm. come out like nice and even instead of spotty with different harsh lighting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So cool. One tip for like, if you are shooting in harsh lighted areas, you could find shadowed areas yes. that would sort of even out different things. So you can take a look for those sort of areas mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. for sure. Awesome. Uh, I'm sort of <laughs> happy with that photo as is. I wouldn't take it any further because they're just like, make it a little bit too artificial, I guess at this point. But. Yeah, yeah. And what settings did you shoot this at? I mean, if it was such a sharp, like sharp, um, such a like high contrast and like bright. Yeah, so 
I wanted a quicker shutter speed, and I find that when you're in higher lighted situations, you can boost your ISO higher and you won't get the grain in your mm -hmm. image. So I boosted it up to 640 because I wanted a shutter speed of 640 as well. Mm -hmm. And then, or anything over 500, just in case the giraffe were to move. To move. And then I wanted a sharpness, but I sort of just uh, decided on the f-stop between the ISO and the shutter speed mm -hmm. because then I could just boost the ISO or the f-stop to where I wanted the exposure to be and then yeah. it landed on f10 so it was a nice sharp Very image. Nice. So awesome. you sort of judge what your camera settings are for what you want to shoot so if you're feeling like your animal's gonna move on you or something so you want to have that higher shutter speed yeah so you yeah. want to focus on that more than any of the rest because if you don't capture that image that you want even if it's a bit grainy it's better grainy than it is blurred you know? yes yeah if yeah that's it's what all you're going for, for what you're going for yeah at the end of the day it's like okay what what are you choosing to focus on yeah um is it you know freezing a moment or capturing movement or like you know mm -hmm. it just all comes down to that for sure. Do you ever um, kind of like, you know, create photos like from your own like personal projects, personal work, and then find that like a client or somebody comes out to you and wants to use that image and like yeah. what happens then? Um, I just sort of discuss with them what they'd like to use it mm -hmm. for and then I just decide on a price for how long the image is going to be mm -hmm. used for. And uh, yeah, I've sold quite a few of my images like after the fact that I've yeah. taken a personal one and then. Which that's really cool because it's something that you just like worked on on yeah. your own and it wasn't, you know. So that's a little bit how it started at the beginning too mm -hmm. was that I would shoot my own personal photos and then some people like tourism companies would want to use them yeah, for their own to promotion. Promote, yeah, for sure. So then, yeah, we'd just write up different contracts for that and decide on payment and yeah, and kind of do use. all that discussion. Yeah, because it depends on whether the image wants to be used for like a catalog that's going out all year, or if it's just a one-time flyer right, or right. website photo. And yeah, stuff like that. definitely. There's so many components, especially when it comes to that mm -hmm. type of work. Um, definitely. Wow, that's so cool. Um, and as far as like you know, kind of the business aspect of your work, um, do you have any tips or any any kind of advice as far as like, you know, taking photography from a hobby to... Yeah, like if you're interested in pursuing photography full time, I would say just spend as much free time as you have with the camera out there, experimenting, mm -hmm. finding your style, your technique, what you like to shoot. And once you sh like find that passion and what you like to shoot, it will come through your work and mm -hmm. other companies and other people will sort of see that and will yeah. recognize your work and it sh should come your way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Hamad's asking or saying, I always lose my shot while setting up camera settings. That's definitely a tricky. <laughs> That's another one is um, becoming familiar with your camera yeah. to the point where you can change those settings on the fly. Like I don't even have to take my camera away from my face to change manually to, for all right. the settings. Yeah, yeah. So just getting to that point and getting comfortable with like switching around your f-stop, your aperture, and mm -hmm. all the, or mm -hmm. your aperture, and the <laughs> ISO, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, all those technical things, for yeah. sure. So yeah, now it just becomes sort of second hand to shoot it uh -huh. manual, but I always find also the manual photo comes out better most of the time than the auto yeah. focus. Yeah, well you auto. just have more control over yeah. how the image looks, because sometimes when you're on auto settings, like because it's choosing it for you, um, you, you might not get you know certain detail lit correctly yeah. or you know things like that so was it difficult for you to uh, kind of at first go into manual mode yeah for sure um i remember the transition between <laughs> iphone and dslr yeah. and i would always end up taking a photo on my phone as well as my dslr because at the time <laughs> i could always edit and manipulate the photo on iphone much better than i could a dslr yeah. so it was very frustrating until i learned how to use the dslr properly yeah. and then i could recreate or even produce images better than the iphone yeah that's inc that's insane that you would use both of them yeah so <laughs> you're I, like i need to make sure i have them both sides yeah. Have them side by side. <laughs> That's and I'd crazy. even use a tripod sometimes, so it'd have be the exact same angle. Oh so the camera there, and then you swap it out for the iPhone as well. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. And then I also found for like mobile photography, mm -hmm. it takes a bit more work, but if you bring us around a small tripod mm -hmm. or even mm -hmm. a big tripod with yeah. you, it makes a big difference in your photos because mm -hmm. you just have that stillness 
that creates that sharpness in your images. Yeah, yeah, which is super important, especially, I mean, that's kind of a lot of outdoor nature, like you want those details, those yeah. crisp details, so definitely. Well, your work um, speaks for itself for sure, and um, okay. make sure to go follow him, you guys, and check out his website too, because he's got a lot of really beautiful images that you can literally scroll and scroll and look <laughs> and wanna be there, <laughs> so. Thank you. Cool, well that, um, we're ready to head over to Discord, you guys. Um, thank you to everyone who submitted challenges. As I was looking in here, I'm gonna do a real quick refresh just in case anybody's submitted last minute. Um, but when I went in there, I saw more submissions um, after oh, our stream, which is cool. Perfect. So we can, we can even dive into some of those as well. Um, I know some people, it's hard to like, you know, submit your challenges in two hours, especially after the challenge has been given. So mm -hmm. it's re always really nice to just submit after anyway, because people are always giving feedback. Yeah. Um, you know, some of the moderators go in there and it's really cool. It's a really mm -hmm. cool community. So make sure that you guys are, you know, being active. Okay. So let's start. So the challenge for today was to design a spaceship um, decal uh, using type tools. So kind of using like wrapping text around a certain path. Mm -hmm. um, thank you to Voodoo Val for submitting to, um, or for giving us a challenge. A lot of really fun like space themed challenges yeah, always with interesting her. These so. Because I don't do a lot with Photoshop. And yeah, like yeah. That. So it's a different, it's a whole different thing. But this is from Ken Colley. Uh, he says, I know it's cheesy, but I couldn't help myself. Let me just zoom in there real quick. Okay, cool, that's really fun. So I think this is probably from a challenge number two. So a f I think it was last week that um, Voodoo Val gave a challenge where uh, using bevel and emboss to kind of create okay. a little like badge and, and kind of some yeah. dimension to give it like a three. It's got look. that cool like, um, I don't know, key like, or like lock feel yeah, to it Yeah, yeah, for sure. And really great job with you know using that path tool to kind of get this text to yeah, really to wrap around. Form to the edges exactly. there. Exactly. The yeah. Um, I mean, I think this is a great job. I, I like you did a good job as far as wrapping that text and um, love the gold. This texture on the gold badge too. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of makes it look like it's been. It's got that three D yeah, effect to it. Yeah. Exactly. Very cool. And the shadowing like around the mm -hmm, outside. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, it definitely looks like it's popping up. So mm -hmm. really great job, Ken. Um, love to see, you know, more things of course and love it. <laughs> All right, so then we've got um, Snow E. This is challenge number seven. I believe this one's from yesterday. Okay, very cool. So kind of the spaceship that we, yeah. from yesterday's challenge. Super fun. Got I'll cool, always love like, good spacing. Galactic stuff in the background. Yeah. And I like that the lighting is done really well on the spaceship too. Yeah. I think they did a good job. Coming off the one planet there. Yeah. It looks exactly. like the moon that's been like orange a bit. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. Yeah. And it looks rocket. very 3D, very, you know. And it's got that two tone rocket at the bottom mm -hmm. there, which is cool. Yeah, definitely. Love the orange, love the colors in this. I'm curious, I can see that this area right here is very kind of crisp and sharp mm. versus like the kind of softness that we've got over yeah. on this left side. So I'm wondering if maybe that softing could maybe in, blend it in or blending in yeah. or something where it feels a little, you know, kind of like either this is softer or something's happening yeah. um, just to kind of give it a little. But they also, yeah, had that nice orange glow come across yes. the other one there uh, yes. to other planets. Yeah, like so that's a good, um, you keeping know. The keeping the consistency of light. Yeah, definitely. It's so important, like in photography and compositions sure. and composites, all that fun stuff. Cool, well, thank you for submitting Snow E. Okay, so here's tan underscore 2019. Here's my challenge for today. Again, reuse a lot of my previous assets. That's awesome when you can use your assets from a different challenge <laughs> and then use them in, you know, more recent challenges, always the better. For sure. Um, and I kind of feel like I remember this one. This is, so this is a space badge originally, space crab. Oh, okay, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's um, funny. And then here is the uh, text wrapping all around, um, which you did a great job. Went to space and all I got was this lousy badge. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a good play, a good little I like it. little phrase, but loving the texture. Um, I like the detail in the crab too. Yes, yeah, exactly. It really makes it stand out and come out. So. The space crab, um, the font is sort of like the NASA font, which is yes, cool too. Yes, yes. 
yeah, a lot of really good beveling and embossing and making like certain um, uh, parts or elements of your badge like kind of stand out, which and is really cool. detail on the back too. Yeah, love all the different play of, like, of textures, both on the badge, even in the text. Can you see it? Like it's a little mm -hmm. like, I don't know. It's also kind of beveled and, and it's embossed got its own too. Texture there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really great job. This is a good combination of all of the elements of all mm -hmm. the challenges. Thank you, Tan. Okay, so this is from Jared. To the stars and beyond. <laughs> to the stars and beyond. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's um, Voodoo Val's face. So <laughs> <That's> <laughs> love <so> it. <laughs> I think one of the first challenges she gave, um, she like gave her face as okay. an asset. So. <laughs> well. That's a mistake right there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? But, you know, some, some people love that. <laughs> there was this one. Um, one of our... Uh, uh, Paul is one of the kind of Photoshop evangelists. Oh, okay. um, he also used his face in one of the challenges <laughs> before, and it was just hilarious because there's, like, memes on top of memes, and it was just a good um, good time. But great. I mean, fun that you kind of put it, her in this, like, little star thing. Um, love the color gradient in the back. Um, curious is to to kind of see more added to this little. Yeah, you could add a bit more like texture. Yeah, texture or like, like badge like so it sort of stands from the background. Yeah, because right now badge. it just it looks like text floating, you know, just out there. If maybe you added a different color or something mm -hmm. solid to make it look like it's like an actual uh, badge or you know. For sure. Yeah, very fun. Thanks, Jared. Okay. And then this is Darina. Thanks for submitting again. I remember Darina's name. She, uh -huh. um, they submitted uh, a couple times. So, uh, cool. Okay. Yeah, grabbing the same um, space badge from a previous challenge. It says, you get to the bottom, the only available way uh, is when. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like kind of tilting my head. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> only, the is is yeah. Kind of <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you did a great job as far as wrapping that text around and using that path. I've, I remember when I first discovered using like text wrapping and all that stuff, I was like, whoa, this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a really fun um, tool on Photoshop. So yeah, fun little textures, there's gradients and even the little up here is also kind of wrapping around at the top. Yeah. So great job as far as, you know, adding in those elements. I guess the only thing is like mm -hmm. the writing could be incorporated into the badge a bit more instead of floating around the outside. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It could even be like maybe in here, but then the up would probably have to maybe go could just somewhere add another else. Line yeah. Around. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Another layer, or another little outline here, to make it a part of it. Yeah. yeah very otherwise, cool. Good job. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Darina. Okay. And then we've got one from Strugzy. Onsen, hopefully I'm saying that right. <laughs> Here's my decal from today's lesson. Coming in late on the game on this challenge, so I added a pattern to try and combine some of the past lessons. That is always awesome. Ooh, ooh. Like okay. I love, I love it. this. And I love the color too, this kind of like aqua Yeah, mint. it's almost like a piece of jade. Almost. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Got that sort of glow up the top. Yeah, the, even right here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Great job. The great beyond comes to consumes us all eventually. Just relax. Yeah, definitely. I can... It just looks a little bit, like maybe continue the black line around and then wrap the writing around yes. that instead. Yes, yes. Oh yeah, like this kind of, this yeah, line. Yeah, it sort of ends a little yeah. bit funny on each side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So maybe kind of just adjusting that. I wonder if that's more of like a beveling embossing type thing from a previous challenge. Maybe, yeah. Um, but yeah, maybe completing that line would make help it stand out a little bit more. It's a little more but, cohesive. Yeah, and it kind of looks like there's a little like marble texture mm -hmm. here, kind of similar to my my little um, laptop thing. Yeah. Fun and love the color. I think it's great. Would love to see you play around with it a little more. Um, but otherwise, good job, you guys. Really fun uh, submissions. Okay. Also, I'd just like to point out if I seem yes. a little tired, I was uh, <laughs> woken up at like 1 a.m. last night by the fire alarm and then we oh, had no. to evacuate the hotel, From so the I'm hotel. a little bit tired this morning. <laughs> oh, we forgive you. It's okay. <laughs> also, it's, you know, you're talking for two hours straight. Yeah. It can get, you know, kind of, uh, it can be very uh, time consuming and, you know, mind consuming, so we forgive you. <laughs> All right, so this one's from Andreas H. Um, this is from a previous challenge. Uh, oh, fun. 
on. Love the colors in this one. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty Lots sure. Of good colors. Yeah. Love the texture and the kind blending of the blending is nice because it's not like that harsh line. It's sort mm -hmm. of blended between the two a bit more. Yeah, and I like that there's like kind of this like moody, more darker cloud coming up top, and mm -hmm. and you can see the light just like peeking yeah. from beneath. Is this part of the same badge? Uh, um, no, I think this is from a previous challenge. Okay. One probably like a more space themed yeah. kind of environment. But I think there was like one about like adding textures and yeah, filters. Yeah, lots and of all great that textures stuff, so. and colors in this one. Yeah, I know. Space is such a good theme too. to like play around with a lot. So, oh, uh, Tanya says thanks for the feedback. Dorina says thanks for the feedback. Anytime. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. That's awesome. Thank Glad you for you sending your work in. I know it's always super fun. Keep doing it because, you know, it's, it's how we get better. See, yeah. It's how we get better. All right, so this one's from, oh, Voodoo Bell. Oh, yeah, see, do you see the ostrich? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and she just like made that text wrap oh, all wow. around, which is crazy. <laughs> Maybe we'll do an ostrich after this. <laughs> yeah, we could do an ostrich. Um, and then this was her space decal from um, that she had submitted in her challenge. So, very fun. Mm -hmm. Always love seeing this stuff. Okay, this is from Sean. I gave Challenge Eight a go. We'll see if I need to make any changes. Ooh, okay, yeah, definitely getting yeah. that text around. I don't know if it's necessarily wrapped around because it kind of. Yeah. If it was wrapped around, I think the text it's would kind even of like go. a work around wrap around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's still a good badge. Like yeah. it has the most uh, like I don't know official feel. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. And I, this little star thing is like super cool. I like that this has like a cut out. And yeah, how it overlaps into yeah. the other section there is a cool it's design. It's fun like, you know, um, like perspective of like things on it. Yeah, so. sort of draws your eye a bit more mm -hmm. than just having that straight star mm -hmm. in the center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and even just like this cool, whatever, like I don't even know what you call it. Yeah, an extra square in the background there. All these like little squares that are kind of like gradient squares. Um, it almost looks like the background square was the is the inside of the badge layer, so that green sort of radiates mm -hmm, out of the other mm -hmm. one, yeah. Very fun, love it. Great job, Sean. Always love seeing these. Oh yes, yeah, so this was from earlier, so mm. this is what, what she started with, which oh, is okay, really yeah. cool. So I remember seeing this one. Um, all right, you guys, well, that seems, oh, actually, hold on, wait. This is, looks really cool. This one's from Tan as well. Yeah, it's got a crazy Whoa, design. Whoa, here's version two with pattern. I think this might have been from, a, yeah, from from yesterday's challenge, actually. Yeah, with really, the, yeah using patterns. Yeah, the rocket and the pattern. So cool, you guys, this I really is like awesome. the patterns on that one, and then the planets seem to be sort look of well Look at the texture, look at this pattern here mm -hmm. on the actual spaceship. That looks Even the fire awesome. has nice, yeah, it does. It. This is really cool, you and guys. And even the rocket fins, if you go in a bit more, I think they have texture. They on do, them too. yeah. This little like kind of, I don't even know what you'd call it, but like zigzag or mm -hmm. something, but very cool. Guys, this is awesome. Love it. Okay. Well, I think this is a good amount to go over. So, yeah. Um, thank you guys for submitting to the challenge. Um, you know, stick around. We've always got challenges all the time, so make sure that you tune into all the live streams because there's always a lot of things going on, and and you know that's how we get better and improve mm -hmm. our work and all that fun stuff. And you can get feedback on Discord, which is really awesome part about that. And yeah, it's very big on community there. So and always open to answering questions or giving feedback. Yes, on anything. yes. So we'll hop over back over to Tom's. I was thinking room. that we might just jump to Iceland now and Ooh, just do okay. a, a photo. Heading over to Iceland, you guys. We're traveling. <laughs> <laughs> I really like this photo out of Iceland just because Beautiful. It's, it was a very like gloomy, hard to shoot day, but yeah. with Lightroom, you can actually bring this photo back quite a bit. And I actually have this on my Instagram and you oh, can see cool. the difference between it, but we'll develop it here mm -hmm. and uh, go through the workflow. Cool, cool. Awesome. Yeah, we've got about like 10, 11 yeah, minutes, so, so I think that definitely a good amount of time we'll to just like see a little bit. Up until <laughs> yeah, awesome. Any last minute questions, you guys, please um, ask them in the chat. Um, Tom would be happy to answer anything. Yeah, any questions. Any questions. About the workflow. Yes. <laughs> cool. So from here, I just like to. Whoa, bring yeah, that out. really helps. <laughs> it's just because I think I shot it. Um, 
since it wasn't very like bright out, so mm -hmm. I wanted the lower ISO, and then I wanted it fairly sharp on the horse, but then I also had to have a high shutter speed, so then it was very hard to like work between yeah. all of them, so I had to do ISO 125 at 400 mil, 7.1, mm -hmm. and 160 mm -hmm. of the second at like 400 mil, so you gotta hold it pretty still. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't usually like to go like less than 1 200th to like make sure you got a sharp shot out mm -hmm. of your hands. Mm -hmm. Are you the type of person that um, tries to get as much of the shot or the settings right in camera versus? I try to, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. Yeah. So I'll, if it's, um, I'll just shoot it like a little darker sometimes and then I can always bring it back. Yeah, if yeah, I'm... true. Very true. And so I can go into the color oh. here and you know, shift the color a bit and it just gives that nice sort of like blue haze to the background mm -hmm. there. This one here. So cute. And just go into. And this was in Iceland, light. you said? Yes. So we were just Good driving stuff. around. We, um, How did that come We went about? to a camper van for three weeks in Iceland. Oh my gosh. And when we got there, the. So, sorry, I was just straightening the horizon there, making oh, yes, the horse a little bit more clear. And then I'm going to uh, go into the 4x5 here just to see what it looks like Ooh. as a final crop. Love that. And it makes it a little tighter and kind of focuses on that. Gives that a little more compression. Yes. And then, yeah, so we decided to go to Iceland for three weeks. And, Amazing. Um, yeah, we did a little work with Go Campers there and uh, we rented a van from them. And when we landed, there was actually a big storm in the south. Oh, and we were planning to go south and then up and around mm -hmm. north and then back down again. But we had to change our plans because the storms there get so violent and crazy with yeah. wind. Um, they actually shut down all the roads on the south Whoa. end of the island because that's we just push too much cars around mm -hmm. and stuff like that. That's something that's like, you know, something to think about, um, especially when you're doing travel photography mm -hmm. or adventure photography, always looking at the conditions in which you are, you yeah. know, at the time that you're gonna try and travel to and kind of, sometimes you might need to uh, alter your the dates or the times exactly. that you go and um, because when we first got there we actually had to just spend a night or two in the van sleeping whoa. because the outside conditions were just too just, crazy to wow. even really go out and That's do crazy. much. Yeah. Hi Diego, thanks for tuning in. So I'm just going to take my. We're almost at the end of our stream here, but make sure to watch the replay because yeah. um, we went over a lot of fun stuff yesterday. We're going to go today, through some so. editing here anyways. Yes. And so a the horse things. is just dark, but I also would like it to bring back like how brown it was more mm -hmm. instead of that duller brown. So then we'll just bring back some of its color as well as definition. Yeah. And um, I'll just go into command. I'm just doing this a little faster than I normally would because <laughs> yeah. I'm running out of a little bit of time. I just want to get it to a closer finished product. Yeah. But and then Take a horizontal gradient, and then we'll bump the ground up a bit more. Very nice. Um, no, I'll just dehaze it a bit too. That's really nice, just actually. That separation to use that of the like, layer. what is it called again? The, the a horizontal, a horizontal gradient. Horizontal gradient. Yeah. Um, instead of like painting it in, you know, yeah, sometimes that takes a long time. But if you know it's just going to be one big old part of the exactly. Image, so then. when you're working with like landscape photography and stuff like that, there's usually like a horizon or a flat point mm -hmm. where you can mm -hmm. differentiate the two and then it's easier to use your horizontal yeah, gradient. Yeah, definitely. And then I like to bump up the color a bit too. <laughs> Catherine's asking, um, do you remember to reset the clock on your camera or do you have it set up automatically to do that? Um, reset the clock on my camera. Just like when it's recording the shooting time. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Um, I've never actually reset it before. Yeah. I just, it I seems to I do, <laughs> When I upload, I sort of have my own organization system. So like month, day, year, or year, month, day. Yeah. And um, I know the Canon just sort of like labels it like 50D4 mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, something, yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. So you sort of like just take all those files and then put them into that <laughs> yeah. one file. Definitely. Hi, Mahadi. Thanks for tuning in. We're here with Tom Parker. He's just showing us a couple of last minute edits. Um, on day two of our, uh, the photography stream. So I just added a little bit of clarity to the bottom just to give a little bit more definition and then it sort of draws into the horse a bit more. Yes. These Icelandic horses have quit the hairdos on them. <laughs> oh. Uh, it's so horse. cute though. A little brighter, but oh, yeah. this is one of the examples where like you take a photo that doesn't look 
so great off the beginning yeah. and you can really work on it over time and sort of like perfect it to what you want more. Um, yeah, definitely. Oh, Catherine was referring to when you change like time zones, I guess when you're traveling. Maybe? Oh yeah, no, I don't change it at all. I'm just sort of go with Keep it. Keep it, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. like, I never I look at the time the on the camera. It's just, <laughs> right. my phone changes for me. So. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Diego says, this is helpful. I never understood Lightroom. Lightroom. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, there's so, like, Lightroom's such a powerful tool for photos that you can take photos that you might not think came out how you wanted them to, but you can always bring you them back really to what you You can really transform them. Yeah, absolutely. I know, Lightroom has come a long way for sure. Cute. And you can see just, like, so far. Yeah, I would love to see it before and after. Like kind of what's it looking like so far. It's just like whoa, pretty big. Oh, let's not do that. Oh, there we go. Wow, that's insane! So just, what a difference. Just a little bit of tweaking. Like this photo here wasn't really usable with such a dark image and so forth like that. But just with the little that's exposure so change and switching over to that and doing a little temperature tint. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that's another thing when you're shooting manual is that. If you're taking an image and you feel like the colors aren't coming right, like they're a little bit too warm mm -hmm. or they're too blue, um, you can always go into your white balance on your manual mm -hmm. and uh, change it around to what the actual conditions are and then you can Got get it. your photo closer yeah. to what you want and not have to change the white balance later on. Yeah, definitely. Very cool. Yep, Tim Fine. says, Lightroom super easy <laughs> if you have somebody who will edit the photos for you. <laughs> Diego's like, and I wonder how photographers make really nice pictures with Lightroom. Yeah, I mean, you've got a prime example here. Um, yeah, it's Lightroom is definitely more of like, yeah, a tool to kind of enhance an already great picture. Yeah. Or especially, or like in this, you know, example where you, you know, you shoot in raw. I and find that like the, I need these capabilities because when I'm shooting outdoors, you yeah. can't control the lighting all the nope. time, and sometimes <laughs> you are on a time limit. As much as I'd like to like wait around for it, you can't just yeah. wait forever. You can't sometimes. just wait forever, yeah. <laughs> and like with this situation, the horse was just I waited for it to walk into the right position, and but like the lighting wasn't really right. It was very yeah. dark that day. I was getting to the towards the end of the day, but I just saw that composition that I wanted mm -hmm. as we were driving with the horse, and then the background with yeah. the peak in behind it. So beautiful. That's awesome. Well, that's looking good so far. Yeah, I mean, this is like one that I could spend a lot more time on to mm -hmm. bring it up to what it was when I fully edited it. Yeah, and this is on your Instagram as well. Like, this is yeah, one so that you've already you'll be able to before. go to Instagram and see the actual final edit because I don't think we'll be able to get to the very yeah, end Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, make sure to go follow him. Uh, it's Tom Parker without the E. Because <laughs> I find these kind of images that you uh, have to pull back. You have to really like work around and sort yeah. of play around with it a bit more and then you can come to a final product eventually, but mm -hmm. it takes a bit more playing around with your editing for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's all about tweaking and trying different little things. Um, I know it's, someone, you could spend like really a long amount of time on mm -hmm. a certain image. What's kind of your typical time frame as far as um, when you're editing? Like one image? Um, it can be as short as like a minute or less, <laughs> and then it can be as long as maybe, I don't know, half an hour to an hour if you really want to get into like yeah. doing the selective brushes yes, and yes. just sort of going in and painting different mm -hmm. areas. Kind of like then, what we were working on yesterday. And then you might paint something and then you're like, oh, I don't really like that as much, and then paint over it again yeah, or something like Yeah, definitely. Um, Diego's asking, on a low exposure shot, is the information there and just need to increase the exposure on RAW? As long as you, um, it's not too dark, um, you can usually pull back quite a bit of information. Um, I like to shoot my exposure just like one or two notches on the um, mm -hmm. lower side of exposure, just because I like to have that more flexibility in the higher end whites. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't usually like to have them blown out at all. Yeah, because then it's really hard to bring those highlights down. Yeah. Um, then it just looks a little funky. <laughs> Oh, Diego says, I feel like VIP now with my questions been answered right away. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for asking all those questions. See, like, another thing we could do here is we could mm -hmm. really brighten it up to get the yeah. detail of the horses and stuff, but then you can dehaze. Dehaze a little. And then you can bring back that color a bit more, too, and then the mountain. Whoa, yeah. So it's just a bit of playing with, like, sliding one bar and then taking away from the other. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
And Definitely. Then, since it gave it so much color, you might want to just take a bit of the color away, away. from Away, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's really awesome. And you can definitely check all of his workout on Instagram too. So make sure to follow him. He's got some great stuff. How often do you post? Um, I haven't been posting as regularly as I should be, but I will be posting, I don't know, every day or so or every second day and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, that's awesome. I try and stay consistent and answer any questions that are on yeah, there. For sure. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> Oh, Surya says, what's going on here? Well, we're here with Tom Parker. Um, we're kind of getting close to the end of our stream here, but he was just showing us some, some of his editing workflow on all of his outdoor and adventure photography. Um, yeah, make sure to watch the replay of yesterday's stream too, because he went over a lot of really fun stuff. Yeah, um, and then earlier today, we went over a different post slide as well. Yeah, awesome. Well, we are at the end of our stream, you guys. Oh, this is so sad, <laughs> it's always so sad. <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in um, and make sure to stick around too because we've got the um, XD Daily Creative Challenge after this and some uh, logo and packaging design after. Um, yeah. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you next time. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye.